All right, here we go. We have legendary actor, martial arts champion, and the star of the cult classic, The Last Dragon, Tai Mok is in the building. How you doing, babe? How's everything? Hey, man. Huge, huge fan. Thank you. And, Where are uh, you? Where are you? Uh, I'm actually in L.A. right now. The Batcave. You were supposed to say the Batcave. <laughs> the Batcave in L.A. But yeah, no, I actually watched The Last Dragon uh, this morning, and I just forgot how, uh, you know, how it kind of stands the test of time. Yeah. Like the, Amazing. you know, like the fighting scenes are awesome. Um you know, the acting is dope. The characters, like guys like Show Nuff, you know, we really and the villains the and everything. We were living it. We were living it. <laughs> yeah, man. Hell of a movie. Hell of a movie. Right from the hell of a movie. And, you know, to the set. And, like, you know, for all the younger fans, like, um, you know, the HBO show Insecure just did a whole episode, which oh, actually right. focused on The Last Issa, Dragon. Issa Ray. Issa Ray. Congratulations to her, right? Wow. Yeah, man. No doubt. Well, let's go ahead and start in the beginning. This is your first time here. Uh, you were, I guess, raised in New York, but then you moved to Europe when you were about seven years old. Yeah, I'm black and Italian. My father's from Naples, Italy. My mother's from Harlem. And uh, we we were going back and forth for a little while. Uh, my mother's friends were talking about how amazing Europe was. And, and there were a lot of artists my parents had, were friends with. And uh, I talk about it in my autobiography, you know. Um, but I'd say from about 7 to 13, 14, we were going back and forth, and we were there for a number of years. Uh, I learned how to speak Italian. I've lost a lot of the words, but uh, um, I even had a Cockney accent when I came back from the state, from uh, London to the States. And I lost it pretty quickly because I got in a lot of fights because kids were making fun of me. I always talk just like this, mate, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Bloomin' Hell, what they always talk, what's the matter, what, what's the matter with my accent? This is why I talk, you know what I mean? I was like, it was really funny. You know what's kind of interesting is, you know, you just mentioned how you had a, a white father and a, a black mother. Um, you were born in 1964, and Loving versus Virginia was 1967. So at the time that you were born, like interracial marriage was actually legal in America. Not for my mother and father. <laughs> Not for that crew and that crowd in New York. Maybe over there, you know. In New York, uh, they were mixing every all over the place. You know, Woodstock, I, I was there when I was a little kid, you know. Naked yeah. people jumping around. It was amazing. But I, 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 I hear you. Yeah, no, just a very different, a d very different time different, in this country where, uh, you know, I mean, these days you see mixed couples all the time. It's not a big right. deal. But but back then, I mean, I'm sure in New York it was kind of cool, but go down south and, you well, know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, my father had uh, hate mail sent to him, you know, because he was a singer, a young guy at 19. He had a hit song, uh, a doo-wop song called Teenager for President. And he was pegged to be a big... Hollywood star, you know, but again, and that's all in my autobiography. It's too much of a long story, but yeah, he got hate mail and stuff because uh, he married out of race back then. If you were Italian, you married a nice Italian girl that knew how to cook spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> and my mother was okay, a, so my mother was a soul food chef. Okay, so your parents were actually married. No, they were. They were actually. The funny thing is, my parents were married by Santa Claus. Okay. At a big costume ball, you got to understand this is 1970 that they uh, kind of had this wedding at my father. My father threw these big costume balls at the Hilton Hotel, um, and and people like the tallest man in the world were there. He was about nine feet tall. I remember I was a little kid, but I couldn't believe how big his feet were. His feet were the size of my leg almost, you know. Um, but they were they weren't actually married like like traditionally okay so but but they were together yeah and uh there were three of you right three kids no my there was my brother my mother was married previously to a gangster from harlem an amazing guy though um the hayes brothers and donald hayes he's no longer with us uh he was my stepfather and he um you know i got into boxing uh, learning boxing from him when i was a little kid and um they had two children, two boys, Lance and Sharif. And then uh, my mother, uh, Donald, got locked up. And my mother met my father. And they had a 
thing there. And then um, in California, they had two children. First my brother, then me. And then they moved back to New York. They were originally from New York. You know, so I was really came from New York, but I was born in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. You don't have a sister? Two sisters. I'm sorry. Yeah. Then, then in New York, there was Nadia and Taishi. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, I mean, you said you had a, a tough family background. I mean, was it, was it hard growing up during that time as a kid? Well, it was very hard uh, because my parents were so young and they were in a tumultuous relationship. They were breaking up, getting back together. There were bad fights. And, um, you know, we basically, my brother and I had to fend for ourselves at times. Uh, uh, and, he, you know, it wasn't like we grew, we grew up, people grew up today with, uh, you know, the era of Oprah Winfrey and, you know, Dr. Phil and, you know, everybody was, nobody was going to therapy. It was like a really tough time, you know. Um, there were situations with the babysitter of getting uh, beaten with a wire hanger. And some people said, yeah, that was me too. And I said, yeah, well, have you been to therapy? Have you uh, investigated how that impacted your life? You know, because that's kind of, you know, people maybe laugh at some of these things, but they're really serious. They really impact you, you know. Imagine a dog getting whipped with a wire hanger at you know, and then how he responds when someone tries to pet them. That's kind of what ended up happening to me. I was supposed to be a dancer. I ended up being a, a fighter because, um, you know, tough neighborhood and also wanting to protect myself all the time. 